Hey everyone, welcome to ISTQB Foundation exam questions and answers. And in this video, I'm going to cover another five exam questions with detailed explanation. So the question 21 of this particular exam set or the first first question of this particular video says WA developer was asked to implement the following business rule. Okay, what is the business rule? Input is a value which is integer number. Okay, if value is less than or equal to 100 or value is greater than or equal to 200, then write value is incorrect okay else right value is okay so simple logic here now you design the test cases using two value boundary value analysis okay two value boundary value analysis which of the following sets of test inputs achieves the greatest coverage all right now little bit tricky question here because you have to first identify the boundaries okay so you have to first identify the partitions and then the boundary values and apply two value boundary value and then see which one of these options so you have to select one option which of these options from four give you the greatest coverage in terms of two value boundary value analysis so if we talk if we see this logic here it's not very complicated it's simple one now you see this it's a simple program which accepts an integer okay and if the value is between or basically between 100 and 200 or 101 and 199 because if it is equal to 100 as well then it should be correct right so if we try to create the partition first okay so if the value is how will the value be okay so we can say okay valid partition okay so how will the partition be valid only if the value is less than or equal to 100 and greater than or equal to 200 then the value will be incorrect incorrect so that means sorry let's write valid here okay and make it so let's figure out the valid one first so if the value is less than or equal to 100 that means if the value is up to 100 then that is value incorrect that means it's an invalid partition okay so the value anything which is basically 101 to 199 okay and then there is another invalid condition wherein the value will be invalid or value incorrect wherein if the value is greater than or equal to 200 so if it is 200 or anything more than 200 or equal to 100 or anything less than 100 right so that will be invalid and anything in between else you'll see that else it is basically else that it should be okay right so value is okay value okay that means if it is 100 between 101 to 199 the value is okay so with this equivalence partition we came up with the boundary values as well right so what boundary values we got 101 199 and then in the upper in the invalid partition we have 200 and anything above and then 100 so the boundary values in these partitions are 100 101 199 and 200 now with the two value boundary value analysis the boundary value and the corresponding you know the the closest boundary uh, or closest value in the next equivalence partition so partition so basically if we are talking about 101 what is the closest boundary value in the next partition which is 100 right so if we are getting with this particular test data if we are getting if we say 100 percent of the two value boundary value coverage that means with from each partition you are actually getting all the values that are there right so basically the value that is there on the boundary so basically this boundary 101 and then corresponding which is 100 so if the test data you have is 100 101 199 and 200 then you are 100 percent then you are getting 100 percent coverage let's see which test data is providing us the maximum coverage so if we go ahead with the a okay so a is 100 so which is basically covering this value then we have this 150 basically 150 is in between so it's not covering the boundary value as such so 150 is out 200 is covering this value so it's covering one of the boundary value and then we have 201 so basically out of four two values are covered so basically this is giving us 50 percent of the two value boundary value coverage okay so this is giving 50 percent let's calculate the others 99 again 99 is in the invalid partition but it's not the value that we are looking for it's not two value boundary coverage so it should be 100 so basically 100 is there so 100 is covering here the invalid partition and the boundary value 200 is covering this one and 201 again this is also covering only 50 percent right so let's mark that then we have 98 99 so 98 9900 all three come here only 100 is the boundary value okay that we can count and then we have 101 so that is basically two out of four so 100 101 199 200 these are the four two value boundary value conditions the values so only two so again this is also giving us 50 percent coverage now if we go ahead with the d option we have 101 which is this value 
okay then 150 that's just somewhere in mid mid then we have 199 which is the upper boundary of the valid partition and then we have 200 which is the boundary value which is uh, the next value of the valid partition right so the bound the boundary or the value of the next partition of the valid equivalence partition right so basically here you will see with this option you are getting three values okay so we are getting 101 90 199 and 200 so basically this is giving us 75 percent coverage and that is why this is giving us the maximum coverage or greatest coverage in terms of two value boundary value analysis okay and that is why this is the correct option so basically whenever you have two value boundary value test case make sure you create the equivalence partition then from the valid partition or partitions that you have the upper and lower boundary from that partition and the next value from the next partition that's basically two value boundary the, that's how you get two values two value boundary value analysis those values and then you come up with these calculations okay so d is the correct answer for this particular question moving to the next one now the next question says you are working on a project to develop a system to analyze driving test results you have been asked to design test cases based on the following decision table so the, this is the decision table what they are asking is what test data will show that there are contradictory rules in the decision table we have to find the contradictory rules from this particular test data and we just have to select one option so there is one rule that is contradicting what these rules are defined here so the rule is c1 c2 c3 first attempt at the exam theoretical exam passed practical exam passed so based on these three rules you have the outcome so you issue driving license only if theoretical exam is passed and practical exam is passed you request additional driving licenses uh, license uh, lessons basically if your if this is your uh, if, if the practical exam is failed right you request to take exam again if your theoretical exam is failed right okay so let's see these particular test data and see where the contradictory rules are okay so what we have to figure out basically is there any data that contradicts with couple of rules here okay so if we talk about this first one a so we have this c2 c1 true c2 true and c3 as false so basically you will see that we have no such rule wherein we have this so c2 is true here okay and then we don't have c3 as false so basically this is not applicable to any of the rules so we can omit this out if we talk about the b option c1 is true c2 is false so basically it's covering here we say c C2 is false so it is covering this R2 and then C3 is true right so basically this is covering R2 so this is not contradicting with multiple rules okay now if we talk about this C option so C1 is true C2 is true and then C3 is true so basically it is basically C2 and C3 both true here so this one is covering the R1 and then C1 is false C2 true and C3 true so again both of these conditions are covering rule 1 so this is also out this is not contradictory now if we talk about about this one d so c1 is false we can say okay rule 3 then we have c2 as false so c2 as false is rule 2 and c3 as false is rule 3 again right so it is this d option is having data which is matching both rule 1 and true and basically it's a contradictory rule right so this is what we have to figure out what test data will show that there are contradictory rules in the decision tables right and this is the data that will show you that particular so d is the correct option for the contradictory rules in the decision tape okay so this is the next question moving on to the next one which is the third question of this particular video you are designing test cases based on the following state transition diagram you have this state transition start position then room request requesting these different states here so requesting state waitlist state if you cancel it goes to end if the room becomes available gets confirmed if you during requesting itself the waitlist is not there straight away goes to the confirmed and pay and ends so based on this what is the minimum number of test cases required to achieve 100% valid transition coverage okay so 100% valid transition coverage now if we talk about the valid transition so you'll see first let's see what all flows are possible the valid flows that are possible that will cover that will give us 100% coverage so to get 100% coverage in the state transition you first have to figure out what coverage or what all paths are there right so basically if you'll see start room request requesting if say for example 
room is available then it goes to the confirmed and then straight away pay and ends right so this is one of the flow okay now if we talk about the next flow so next flow could be start comes to requesting but the room is not available so it goes to wait list so it covers this not available transition as well now from this wait list there are two possibilities if the user doesn't want to stay in the wait list they can straight away go ahead and cancel and that flow ends okay so this is the second coverage but still you will see there is one transition which is basically from wait list to available that is not covered so we have already got two test cases right two test cases which is giving us coverage of majority but still one of the path is left let's see how we are going to cover that or how many test cases will be required to cover that so if we go ahead now here we again go from the start requesting and then we go to wait list and person wants to stay in the wait list as soon as the room gets available then this path comes in here triggers the room is available it gets confirmed and customer pays and end so basically you will see this also gets covered so overall how many minimum tests we had to exercise or basically use to get or get 100% valid transition coverage and this is all valid transition coverage right so basically we need three okay so one with the red path one with the yellow path and one with the green path so a is the correct answer for this particular case okay and we just have to select one option so that's how you are going to figure out these any of the state transition diagram questions moving on to the fourth question of this particular question set you want to apply branch testing to the code represented by the following control flow graph so this is the control flow graph okay and you want to apply branch testing how many coverage items do you need to test okay now in the branch testing and if they are asking for the coverage item you simply have to count the branches okay or the transitions that are there and that's that's how many coverage item you will need to test okay so similarly like we have done here okay so you just count the transition so one two three four five six right so similarly that's what they are asking so how many branch items we have to test here is how many transitions we have so if you count transition one two three four five six seven and eight these are the transitions that we have to test so basically the correct answer is c which is eight okay so you'll see there are eight branches and that's what we are going to test and that's what they are asking moving to the next question how can white box test testing be useful in support of black box testing okay very important white box testing useful in support of black box testing not individually how white box testing supports or is helpful with black box testing so let's see we have to select one option white box coverage measures can help testers evaluate black box tests in terms of code coverage achieved by these black box tests very valid point let's mark it most probably this is the correct answer let's eliminate others white box coverage analysis can help testers identify unreachable fragments of the source code now this statement is correct overall okay but this is nothing to do for the testers right so it testers usually don't identify unreachable fragments of the source code okay so this is not true or basically this is not true in the sense of our combination of the black box testing right so here white box analysis helps developers but not in co in conjunction with black box this statement is not correct so this is out branch testing subsumes black box test techniques so achieving full branch coverage grant guarantees achieving full coverage of any black box test technique or black box technique that's absolutely incorrect branch coverage doesn't guarantees full bl uh, black box test technique coverage okay white box test technique can provide coverage items for black box technique that's also invalid statement so the correct statement is white box coverage measures can help testers evaluate whatever black box test cases have been written when they are executed then white box coverage measures can help the black box tests or whatever tests are there when they are executed it will help to analyze and show what is the code coverage level achieved by those black box test cases when they are executed so that's where white box testing in conjunction or in support of black box testing is really helpful and a is the correct answer for this particular question okay so that's all for this particular video which i have covered five exam questions with detailed answers in the next video i'll cover another five exam questions with detail thank you see you in the next one